Hello everybody, this is Prelude Boy 99 and today I'm going to teach you how to put in LED taillights for your Honda Prelude. This is my first time doing it, so I'm not an expert, but I have instructions and I read through it. Seems simple. We'll see how simple it is. But as you can see, I took out all the interior of my rear trunk. It's sitting right over there, so you guys don't have to really worry about tearing stuff open. The good thing about these taillights that I bought is that uh, they have wire taps, so you don't need a cut or solder anything it's it's really just plug and play and i'm gonna teach you guys how to do it the right way the best way how to tuck it make it look all nice but what we're gonna start with first is taking out these six screws right here you can see it, these six screws and we're gonna pop these taillights out and then i'm gonna put the new led taillights in i'm gonna first talk about the led taillights before i do that so let's get right to it all right, so we are in my basement and these are the new LED type taillights. As you can see, you can see the LEDs there. These are sequential taillights, so they have different patterns and, and all that fancy stuff. These taillights were custom made. I did not make them. This guy in J Japan made them for me. These were not cheap taillights. These taillights cost a lot of money. I'll get into that later in this video, but this is what the taillights look like. And as you can see in the back, these are all the connections that I need to make. These, these two wires plug and play. They, they hook up into the old OEM setup. These two are connected via the power. So these are wire taps. And these are connected to the controller and the relay for the new tail lights because these things come with relays. So what I decided to do in my free time was I decided to buy wire loom and put these wires to the wire loom so it looks more cleaner and neater. So I don't have to really worry about wires getting tangled up. I did that for both of them. You can get these in eBay, 50 feet for 13 bucks. Best 13 bucks I ever spent. So the taillights actually come with this little remote. And uh, I think it's actually really cool that it came with a remote. I was. I was already satisfied with the LEDs, but uh, this is to control the LED turn signal sequential system. So, uh, no, button number one is a switch that switches between lighting of the blinker and lighting of the meteor. Normally it is used for the meteor of the brake, so it is not necessary to use. Okay, so I'm, I'm uh, by the way, I'm also reading the instructions. Number two is random mode. Number three is pattern switching. And number five is, let me just turn this page right here. Number five is pattern switching. Each time you press it, it will switch the next pattern. The pattern can be switched by rotating in the opposite direction to three. And number four and six are speed control. So four increases the speed and number five slows it down. Or not number five, number six slows it down. So those are the buttons and what they do and how they function. If you buy these taillights, it's gonna come with instructions and installation instructions, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, honestly, I only mess with button three, four, and six. I don't really touch one, two, or five. So we got the tail lights out. It's very simple, just literally nine eight millimeter uh, nuts. It is nine eight millimeter nuts, so you just need an eight millimeter socket. And boom shakalaka, you got them all loose. So we have the new tail lights in this box, and I'm gonna install them now. So I'm gonna let you guys watch the process of that. So I hope you guys enjoy.
So I had a bit of a dilemma with the 8mm screws. Using a 3 8 impact driver is probably not the smartest idea because I could run the chance of cross starting it or uh, since these screws, I don't know if you guys can see that, but since the these screws right here aren't really like molded into the plastic, they're screwed onto the plastic, so they have a chance of cross threading in the plastic of the assembly. I ran into that, I fixed it, I'm fine. Uh, no, no big issues. But I realized that these plug into the OEM assembly on your own tail light. Let me show you. So see where this light bulb connects? If this can focus, that's where that thing connects to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my old OEM assembly and use a pick to pick out the, the wires that do not go in. Hello everyone, this is gonna be the wiring diagram segment of this video and I'm gonna be showing you guys what wires are gonna be useful. So play very, very close attention and if you need to, pause the video. So. In this diagram right here, we have the white, the brake lights, which are going to be the white wire with the black tracer. Uh, this is also the same for the high mount brake light. If you guys have spoilers or if you guys are going to get the type S spoiler like I did, so it would be very useful. And on this photo, we have the side markers and the parking lights. So it's got to be red and black for the left and right side markers and the parking light and it's also going to be uh, red and black for the license plate and uh, the other tail lights so uh, red and black is also a very important wire to study and if you have the hell's manual I left the page number on the bottom left the next page is going to be the reverse light uh, on the tail light assemblies this is something that you can just plug and play into your old harness which is important and crucial to making these taillights legal and to work you need to reverse lights so which is why I retrofitted my uh, OEM harness to fit onto the pre-existing uh, wires for the taillight assemblies so it's going to be green and black for the backup wires which is uh, the wires you're going to want to keep when you're creating your wire harnesses for your taillight okay so the next part is extremely important for you to know that the green and blue tracer and the green and yellow tracer are going to be your turn signals. The green and blue tracer is going to be your left turn signal and the green and yellow tracer is going to be your right turn signals. This is important because on the relay and the controller you're going to need to tap your the wiring for your left and right turn signals so you can have the cool patterns that my taillights have. So this is the harness that I am modifying as you can see here that's the blue that's the green and yellow tracer wire which I am going to take out because I don't need it the harness is only for the reverse lights and the parking and the uh, tracer lights so you want to keep the ground wire and take out the green and the yellow wire tracer and you want to keep the red and black wire so see this, the harness connector opens up on the bottom and the top. You just need a little pick to just open that up. And basically what you want to do is you want to get something small enough to pretty much push the little, the little clip inside the pin so you can push the wire out, which I will show you real quickly. At first I did the wrong wire and I took out the red and black wire, which is something I wasn't supposed to do because that's the wire for the... Mar side markers and the nighttime running lights so as you can see in the next photo so there is a three wire connector that has the red and black wire and the green and white tracer wire and a ground wire that's the wires that you want to keep and you don't want to deep in it I was foolish and I did that and then I realized that I needed the wiring so I kind of apologize because I didn't really take good pictures or enough pictures of what I'm talking about so I'm going to show you what wires that you can cut so that way you got it can ease some confusion because again I didn't really show the connector that I kept 
I didn't show the final product so of the wiring these harness. are the wiring harnesses that I decided to cut from the OEM wiring harness for the taillight and as you can see it is just basically these ones right here for the left side taillight and this is for the right side taillight so if you can cut these wires basically the black and red this connector with the with the green and yellow with ground and another black and red you should be good so I wanted to provide an update as to what's going on with the tail lights because I know it's been a while since uh, you guys last saw it it's been since yesterday since I uh, took photos of the diagram but as you can see here I took the old harness the tail light and I retrofitted it to fit in if you can see into this since it fits right there I did the same thing for the other side so that it could fit right there I'm sorry here let me get a light on that right there like I said I retrofitted the old harness so it can fit so I didn't have to modify do some weird stuff so what I did for for these for this old harness was that over I'll show you guys over here I peeled off the the old weathering grommet that goes behind these taillights and uh, on the new ones on the new taillights it had the same kind of weather weatherproofing grommet rubber piece that goes over this I peeled it off and I put the new modified harness here so that way the it gives it a clean look rather than it being outside the the car it's actually like within here so it just it's not like all out and about it's just in here so so it looks cleaner so i can have the connector here connector there and everything else can just look clean that's that's pretty much what i'm doing right here that's why it looks super clean these two these two wires are wire taps that are for the daytime running lights so basically what these need to be attached to are the black the red wire with black tracer and the ground wire what this does is that it turns on the daytime running lights so that when you're at night or not daytime running lights I'm, I'm my apologies uh the running lights so when you're at night and you turn on your headlights these will illuminate so i'll show you guys what that looks like in a bit but I'm just giving you guys an update. So what I did was with these, I don't know if I guys told you guys earlier, I decided to get wire loom and put the wire and the turn signal wire from this. I also used duct tape to, to make it seal. And I put a wire, um, wire loom so it can look cleaner and more neat. So what my plan is, is to run this all the way over here and have the controller and relay here in this area so that way it's it's all uh in one area rather than just in a weird spot like right here or right there it's just going to be right here i am going to use zip ties to, to zip tie this to the original the original wiring casing i actually have I actually, ooh, that's dirty. I I actually bought zip ties that connect into like these these holes with the with the little plugs. I don't I don't know the exact wording, but I bought them and they're on their way. I don't have them yet, so for now I'm just gonna zip tie the the wire loom to the original casing, so it looks a lot neater. So I'm still in process. The only reason I'm not filming myself doing this is because I'm trying to figure this out as I go along. Uh, when I find anything out, I'm going to obviously record it and explain to you guys what I did. Again, here with the two, with the two red and black wires for the uh, running lights, I just basically attached it to the red and black tracer and the ground wire. So that way it can light up. I'm still trying to figure out the the relay and the controller because apparently the relay needs a 12 volt line. 12 volt line for it to connect to at all times and i have not figured that out yet because some people 
or this guy I'm talking to that has the same taillights, he said that he connected the power lines directly to the 12 volt battery and I'm trying to figure that out. One of my guesses is to try to connect it to the speaker, the power, uh, the power line for the speaker because I think the speaker is attached to the 12 volt line and it's hot at all times. I have to find a wire that's hot at all times. I don't know what that is. But so far, I think I got the, the reverse light and the running light and the brake light, but I don't have the turn signals because turn signals is the sequential ones. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna record myself doing it because it's a lot of figuring it out and a lot of fucking around. So I'm just gonna do what I can and I'll get right back to you guys. Yeah! <laughs> So I hooked up the turn signal wires to the green and blue wire and the green and yellow tracer wire. The left goes on the blue, the green with the blue tracer and the right, the right turn signal wire goes onto the green and the yellow tracer wire that hooks up to the relay, which is also hooked up to the controller. So I got everything set up and hooked up. And I was actually struggling to find the constant power source for the 12 volt line that connects to the relay. And I found that the constant power line is the white with the green tracer line, which is the constant power line. I'll show you a diagram in a second, but the turn signals work. That's the good thing. I'm going to go call it a day or a night or whatever because it's already like 1 30 in the morning and i have to clean all of this stuff up to make it look more neater but other than that everything seems good to go right now i'm trying to figure out how to install the load equalizer because if you don't put a load equalizer in an led taillight system you're gonna get hyper flashing so i'm about to show you what the hyper flashing is and what hyper flashing doesn't look like so that's if this thing can focus that's what hyper flashing does not look like. This, that's hyper flashing. And if you run a car like that after putting LEDs in it, you will possibly melt something. Because the reason for that is we're putting LEDs in this car. And the car is not meant to run on LEDs. It's meant to run on bulbs. LEDs require less current to light up. And the car just doesn't know what to do with the extra current. But what I decided to do to combat this is using a resistor equalizer or resistor load. And I'm going to wire tap it. Just in focus. I'm going to wire tap it onto the car's body right here. And I have to do the other side. So I'm probably going to do it right there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. All right, so I'm about to wrap up. I fixed the hyper flashing with the... Sorry. I fixed the hyper flashing with the resistor, the load resistors. I have not found a screw big enough or small enough, I should say, to fit into the hole and not mess with the heat sink itself. But I will figure that out at a later time. But I'm basically just, just going to do an overview of what I did. I also wrapped uh, the wires in, uh, in loom in plastic casing, so we don't really have to worry about stuff nicking the wires and to power the relay i ran this wire all the way to the stereo amplifier not the stereo amplifier but the the white with the green tracer wire which is all the way over there i also zip tied the the controller onto this I'm, I'm not, that's just a temporary fix. I am, I do have some zip ties that can fit inside the hole, like the, OE, like the OEM zip ties, which are right there. But the left turn signal I attached to the blue with the, the green wire with the blue tracer and, right? Yeah, that seems about right. And the right wire is the green wire with the yellow tracer and again with the load equalizer i pretty much just attached it to those same wires so for the left side 
I did the green with the blue tracer and I connected it to the ground, which is right here. Sorry, it's hard. I'm kind of like bent over upside down, so it's kind of hard for me to do this. I also connected the load of resistors to the, to the car's ground while connecting it to... <sighs> well, there goes the lawnmower. Um, yeah, I connected it to the ground, the load resistors, and I made also made the custom harness for the tail lights, so you can just plug it in for the reverse light and the daytime running lights and the brake lights. So everything seems about straightforward. I don't really think this was kind of straightforward. Nothing was too difficult. I did uh, loom up the wiring for the controller and for the controller right here, this, I'm sorry if you can't see that, this is just plug and play. Uh, it also has labels to see which side goes where. So this label right here belonged to the left side and the right side, I connected to the right side, which was labeled. I used a lot of zip ties to make things cleaner and neater, but as you can see, it's just a big mess over there in that corner. So I, uh, I'm probably gonna fix that later, but I think, I think that's a wrap on this. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.